All right, 4.4, problems in two dimensions. So we're looking at an example of where a surveyor measures two of the sides and one angle in a random triangle ABC. She determines that one of the sides is 600 meters, another side is 700 meters, and opposite the smaller side, is an angle of 45 degrees. Once we know this information, we have to determine the t how many triangles can be drawn. In this situation, we have an angle B, which is 45 degrees, the side 700 meters, which is adjacent to the 45 degrees, and finally the 600 meters drops from the side that's 700 meters so that there are two possible sides. Why are there two possible sides? Well, we need to look at how triangle ABC has the possibilities of triangle ABC1 and or triangle ABC2. This, in its essence, is known as the ambiguous case for sine law. Many students have difficulty with this concept. All right, recap from grade 10. Do you remember when in grade 10, when we had the different laws for any type of triangle that wasn't a right triangle? We used in grade 10, the two laws one of them called sine law, which is sine over A, sine B over B, sine C over C, and or A over sine A, B over sine B, and C over sine C. And this is when you have an angle and its opposite side. It's crucial for sine law to have an angle and its opposite side. The second one, cosine law, is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. That would be true if we're looking for either side a or angle a. What would it be if we were looking for b? Well, it would be b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine B. What if we were looking for little c or angle c? The equation would be c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So it's very fluid and you should be able to figure out the angles. And these are only for oblique triangles. That means non-right triangles. If there is a right triangle, you must use SOHCAHTOA. You must use sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, tangent, sorry, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right, let's look at this example. And what we need to do is determine the values here. So. Bazzi needs a new rope for his flagpole, but is unsure of the length required. He measures a distance of 10 meters away from the base of the pole. From this point, the angle of elevation to the top of the pole is 42 degrees. So here's our flagpole, and there's the ground, and at a right angle is the height of the flagpole. And what you're doing is from the base of the pole, sorry, from the, from some 10 meters away from the base of the pole, there's a 42 angle of elevation to the top of the pole. So 42 de degrees is the angle known as the uh, angle of elevation. All right, what is the length of the pole to the nearest meter? So we're going to find the height of this pole first, and that's what it wants. And the second question says, how much rope? That would be R should Bazzi buy? Justify your answer. So part A, 
we find out that tan of 42 is equal to h over 10. We need h, so tan of 42 is opposite over adjacent. Tan of 42 is equal to h over 10. Set tan of 42 over 1, folks. The re rationale is when you set it over 1, you have a fraction equal to a fraction, and it makes sense for some of you that then you can cross multiply. All right, once you cross multiply, you find out that h is equal to 9.0. 9.0 what? Meters. That's what is the definition is saying. So the, the flagpole is 9.0 meters. Sorry, yes, 9.0. Part B. Cosine of 42 is equal to 10, of, 10 over r. Put cosine of 42 over 1 and cross multiply. You get cosine of 42, sorry, r times cosine of 42 equals 10. R equals cosine of 4, 10 divided by cosine of 42, which equals the grand sum number of 13.4563. Now, if you're buying rope, you need to buy it at a certain length. We're going to assume at this one, you're going to need to buy a minimum of a meter length. So buy meters only, no parts or decimals. You'll be charged it, but no, it's not part of the problem. So, Bazzi should buy 14 meters of rope to uh, so that it is the nearest meters. And you can't buy 13 because we don't have enough, so we now have to move to 14. All right, next question. Example number two. A lighthouse at point L is 10 kilometers from a yacht at point Y and 8 kilometers from a sailboat at point B. From the yacht, the lighthouse and the sailboat are separated by an angle of 48 degrees. Determine the distance from the yacht to the sailboat to the nearest tenth of a kilometer. So, what we're doing is something called a test. We need to test how many triangles can be drawn. 0, 1, or 2. I basically am going to ask you to think of it in terms of the what we learned with quadratics. When we had the discriminant, we were able to determine if there were two roots, one root, or no roots. If you remember with the discriminant, if it was less than zero, there were no roots. If it was equal to zero, there was one root. If it was greater than zero, it equals two roots. Well, for our example here, we're going to use the test, which is a minus b sine a. And the reason we're using this test is if this answer is greater than zero, there are two triangles. If it's equal to zero, there is one triangle. If it's less than zero, there are no triangles to be able to draw. So if we do this test, a minus b sine a, you get 8 minus 10 sine 48, which gives us a positive answer. Because it's positive, we must have two triangles that we can draw. Because of that, we have two triangles. Here's our first one. And I'm going to separate this major triangle into two pieces. There's the first one, and there's the second one. These are the two triangles that we have to determine the distance between the yacht and the sailboat. The yacht and the sailboat could be this little piece from here to here, or the yacht sailboat could be from here to here. So we need to know which distance is cur is the one we want. And to be honest, in this question, it would be both of them. A couple of other things to remember. 
The largest angle is opposite the largest side at all times, folks. And we could change the word largest to smallest, and we would get the same value. The smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. All right, let's move forwards. Here are your two triangles. There's your 48 degrees. And now what you have to do is determine the value of YB1 and YB2. Those are the two values. You do that by having to do some work. What it requires you to do is to think past grade 10 to be the answer to these questions. Sine 48 over 8 is equal to sine B1 over 10. The value here is sine B1, 8 sine B1 is equal to 10 sine 48. Move that 8 over and you get 10 sine 48 over 8. That is the mayor elect. Sorry, that is 10 sine 48 over 8. You need to find the value of B1. You find out that the B1 value is going to be 68 degrees. Now, we know that this angle is 61, 68 degrees. Don't forget that L can have two Bs. It could have an LB going down or an LB going across. So, we know that side L is equal to 180, sorry, angle L is equal to 180 minus 68 minus 48. So we get 64 degrees. B2 is equal to 180 minus 68 degrees. And we find out that B2 is equal to 100 and 12 degrees. Because of that, that B2 is 112 degrees, we could determine the other missing values. The only thing we need is that really ugly angle that yesterday I was confusing. When we were dealing with this, you have to make sure that you understand this question. So B2 is 112 degrees. This is 68. Using supplementary angle theorem, the straight line theorem, you find out that 68 plus this angle must equal 180. So we can do that law backwards. You find out that this angle L is equal to 20 degrees. Why is it equal to 20? Because the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So one of them was 68 degrees. The other one, sorry, not 68. One of the angles is 48 degrees. The angle we just found is 120 degrees. And we need to determine. Once you determine the angle, we can now determine the side. Use angle L to solve for little l.